Today we're going to talk about scanf, which is a function that you need to know. You might not want to use it all the time, but it's one of those core functions you just need to know. So let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back, and thanks for being here as we learn to be better programmers. Today we're going to talk about scanf, which honestly, I don't really know where to start with scanf. It's definitely mandatory material for anyone who's serious about C and C++. Instructors always are sticking it into introductory classes as a partner to printf, but new programmers often don't understand how it works, what it does. It also has some security problems, and it just gets kind of complicated. So today I want to look at scanf, how it works, and some of the issues that come up, and I mean, you can make your own decision about whether you like it or you don't like it. We are going to be working through source code today, and as always, source code is available through Patreon to all of you wonderful people who help me keep the camera rolling, who make this channel possible. A big thanks to all of you. And now let's jump into the code. Okay, so we're starting out today with an empty program. I also have a very simple make file over here that will compile that program. It's just like other make files you've seen in other videos. Check out my make videos if you're new to make, if this looks at all confusing or seem strange. Now this video is for beginners. There may be a few things for you intermediate folks, but I am assuming today that you've had some exposure to printf. At the very least in like Hello World, you've printed out uh, a variable or something. If not, you might want to brush up a bit, check out some of my more introductory videos. But either way, I'll give you a tiny refresher here as we get started. So basically with printf, printf is pretty simple. All we do is we start with a format string, okay? Something like with Hello World, we're gonna look at something like Hello World, something like that. You can just have a format string just like this, or you can print something out. So in the case that's more interesting for what we're looking at today, you might have some value x, let's call it, let's set it equal to seven. And I can do something like x equals, and then I put a format specifier here, like percent %d, which is short for decimal integer. And then for each format specifier that's in this format string right here, I need an argument, okay? And that argument is going to correspond to the format specifier. So in this case, I'll put x, meaning that there's just one format specifier, this percent %d, in this string, and that corresponds to x, which is the variable that we're going to get the value, the integer value that we want to print out. So that's pretty straightforward. And there are a lot of different format specifiers, a lot of different ways that we can tweak this when we're using printf. And I'll let you explore those on your own because we need to get to scanf today. Do let me know if you want a video on format specifiers and like all the crazy different ways you can format things in printf, let me know. Happy to take a look at that in the future. But for today, we're focusing on scanf and scanf is going to look a lot like printf. It's going to, at least it feels similar. They feel like siblings. Only scanf is going to be for input where printf is producing output that's going to standard out. So yeah, so scanf is reading from standard in. And so let's say in this program, let's say that I want to actually read in a value and let the user type in a new value for x, right? So one thing I could do up here, let's, before we get to scanf, let's just put in a prompt so I can print out new x, question mark, maybe something like this. We're basically asking the user, hey, type in a new value for x, and then we can come down here for scanf. And just like with printf, we want a format string, okay? And this format string is going to describe what we're reading in, okay? So in this case, I can put a percent %d again because I want an integer. So this is going to say, hey, I'm reading a decimal integer. And then just like with printf, we need to provide an argument that tells us where to put this thing that we're gonna read in. And so in this case, we're gonna do something like this, the address of x we're gonna read in. And so this is gonna read in a value and it's gonna put it in x. Now, this is the first thing that often confuses new programmers, this ampersand. Why can't I just say X here? Why can't I just do this? Because this is what we did in printf. Why can't we do that in scanf? Now, the reason is pretty simple if you understand pointers and how arguments are passed into functions. So in order for scanf to give us an int back, we need to have a pointer to it. And that's because functions in C, like scanf, pass arguments by value. So meaning that we pass a copy of the argument to the function. So if I pass in X, then scanf would get a copy of X and it can try to change that the value of that copy, all it likes, the value of my variable x back here in main is never going to change. But when we pass a pointer to x, then we're saying rather than here's a copy of x, here is the location in memory where my integer x lives. And I want you to store the data there. And so once we do that, now that scanf has the address, even just a copy of the address, it can still use it to find where I want the new value to end up. So if you found that confusing at all, hopefully it's not anymore, but basically just all these arguments 
statements that you pass to scanf need to be pointers, right? They all need to be pointers. And specifically, they need to be pointers to the sort of thing that we specified in the format string here. So we specified an int here, so we need an int pointer here. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. Now, just to test to make sure it works, let's just add another printf down here. Let's say x equals, actually, let's just copy this one. Sorry, I copied the wrong one. Okay, so now let's come down here and we can compile it. Just make sure everything works. And if we run it, now we should be able to give it some new value like 567. And you can see that we get the new value printed out. So that seems straightforward enough once you understand the whole pointer argument thing. Okay, so what are the concerns? Now, I did mention that there were some. And so let's talk about a few reasons why people might have concerns with scanf. The first one I want to talk about is that there are security concerns. This doesn't mean that scanf is necessarily bad, but that you need to know how it works in order to avoid doing something dangerous. Now, I have an older video about how strings can be dangerous, how strings in C can get you hacked, and some of the functions surrounding strings. So check that one out if you want more information about what I'm talking about here. But probably the easiest way, if we're just like trying to make a security vulnerability, probably the easiest way to do something dangerous is to try to do something like this, where let's, let's just copy this whole thing here. Let's do another read. But instead of reading an integer, let's read a string. And let's come down here and say, what is your name? And then we're going to declare a, not an int, we're going to declare a character array called name. And let's say that it's 20 characters long. And then here we did percent %s, that's for string instead of an integer. And then we'll come in here and just say name. And you're wondering, why didn't I get the address of name? And well, that's because in C, arrays and pointers are basically the same thing. If you're confused about that, I do have a video that goes into detail on that. But in this case, we just say name because name is actually a pointer, so it's okay. And then down here, just to round things out, we'll say name equals and we'll print it out. So we'll do the same thing we were doing before. And so if we do this and if we make and we run it, like this is going to work, right? We're gonna say, okay, our next value for X is 45. And then what is your name? Say it's Jacob, right? That's gonna be okay. Now, the problem here though, is that scanf doesn't check the length of name. It has no idea what the length of name is. And so if instead, if I run this and I add something, let's say we go five here, and then, you know, I add a, a much longer, you know, than 20 here, it's going to let me do that. And in this case, you notice it caused an abort. This actually caused my program to crash because what's happening here is, well, when we overrun the end of our array, basically we're just stomping on whatever happens to be after it. In this case, it's a local variable. So we're stomping on the stack. There's a lot of valuable stuff on the stack. So, you know, best case, it just causes your program to crash or have some, you know, weird behavior. Worst case, if you have a clever attacker, it can allow them to take over your program and do stuff that you definitely don't want them doing. So that's definitely something you want to avoid. Now, there are, I guess, some things we could do like we can adjust the width. I could come down here and say, hey, uh, put a 19 here. And that means say the, the string that I'm passing in only read up to 19 characters. So now if we come back down, compile, and if we try this whole thing again, we you know type in a bunch of stuff and you notice we're just gonna get the first 19 characters. So this is one way to, to kind of protect against this. If we know what we're getting ourselves into, I think it's a little ugly because I have to actually hard code the number right in here. I'm sure we could probably get something less fragile using preprocessor tricks. Please do let me know down in the comments if you got a great trick for how to solve this problem. But the more conventional way to get around this is to use something like fgets that does length checking on your buffer and use that to read in the whole line and then you can parse it without worrying about big, nasty, unbounded inputs. Okay, so that's one issue. Now, another issue is what happens when you have errors in your input. So when scanf does doesn't get what it expects. So what happens if we come down here and we run our example program and rather than getting a integer value for X, I get something like W. Now at this point, we're sitting there going, you know, what just happened, right? New programmers often at this point are very concerned, very alarmed, because not only did it not read in a new value, it didn't change the value of X, which is what we were trying to do, but it makes sense because W is not an integer, but it also skipped right past the next prompt and it just basically assigned W to be the name. And this is probably not what a new programmer dabbling in scanf the first time had in mind when they wrote this code, right? It seems strange, what's going on here? Well, what happened pretty simply is we told scanf to grab an int, right? We told it to grab something that looks like an int and it tried, but it ran into something that wasn't valid input for an int. In this case, it was a W. And so this first 
call to scanf basically failed. It didn't pull anything off of standard in, but it left the W where it found it. So the W is still there in standard in. And so now when I call scanf again down here, it goes, ah, cool. Well, let me look at the buffer and yeah, you typed a W followed by a new line and that works as a string. So now my name is, yep, it's W. And this right here, folks, has caused a lot of new programmer tears over the years. So what can we do about it? Well, one thing we could do is we could just try to check to see if there's an error. It's generally a good practice, so so what could we do? Let's just first look at this top one. Let's say we wanna see, I wanna do error checking on this one. So what we could do is put this in a loop. Let's say we say, let's make a result, some integer, and then have a do while loop. We know we wanna do at least one of these. And let's just say, while result is equal to zero, explain that in just a second. What we're gonna do here is just say result is equal to scanf. Okay, so what this is gonna do, scanf is going to return the number of integers, the number of things that it actually returned, that it found when it was scanning. So in this case, it's gonna return one if it finds the integer I was looking for, and it's gonna return zero if it didn't find an integer, okay? So as long as result is equal to zero, it's gonna just keep doing this, which maybe seems a little bit like what we wanna do, right? So now let's come down here and let's just see what this, so now let's make sure we save it and now let's come down and see what we have. So if we try to run this and now I type W, then, well, yeah, that's not helpful. It's definitely not what I wanted. One thing is it's not allowing us to move on to the next prompt, which is sort of what I wanted, but the problematic input is still sitting there in standard in. I haven't made it disappear, so it just keeps prompting over and over again, but it keeps returning zero over and over again. So to really fix this, I need to get it out of the way. And so one way to do this is I can just come in here and I can call F flush on standard standard in. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to clear out any pending data on that line that was read but not processed by scanf. And so now I think this might actually sort of work. We'll see. Okay, so we'll run it again. And now if I say w, it's going to ask again. Okay, good. This is progress, right? So if I say one, two, three, we're good and Jacob, and we're good. Okay, so that's looking like what we were expecting. That's looked like what we're trying to get at. But there is one issue, and that is if I'm pretty sure if I come back here and I say one, two, three, A, B, C, then it's still going to accept it, even though this is garbage input. And in many cases, I would want this to not work at all, but to say, hey, yeah, that's not a valid input. But in this case, it didn't. It said, okay, great, you started with some digits, so we're just gonna run with it, right? Now, of course, if you don't care about this case, you can, you can stop here and we're fine, but let's say we do care about this case. Let's say that I want an integer and just an integer. I don't want integer with a bunch of junk at the end. So let's say that we actually do wanna have an error of some kind, or we at least wanna try again if we run into this case where there's junk after it, where it's not a clean entry. So in this case, there's a few ways we could handle it. One thing we're going to do though is to tell scanf to take a look at what comes after our int. Okay, so for example, I can come up here and let's make a character variable called next ch or next character. And then I'm going to just come down here and put a percent %c. So another format specifier after my integer. And then we'll put next ch here. And we need the ampersand because we need a character pointer. And what I'm really doing here is I wanna make sure that the thing that comes immediately after my integer is a new line character. Meaning that I just typed in an integer, just one integer, and I hit enter. Anything else I don't want to be accepted as valid input. And then the only thing then that I need to do is to come down here and let's just basically say we want to keep looping while either we didn't get anything, meaning that we we didn't get an integer at all. We basically just bailed before we got our integer or our little next ch character is not equal to slash n, right? It's not equal to the new line character. And if either of these things are true, then we're gonna go up and we're gonna ask again and basically do this whole process over again. And now if we compile it and we run it, now let's see, let's run it normally. That looks fine. Now if we come in and do like, something like that, it's not gonna like it. If I do one, two, three, A, B, whatever, that's not gonna work, right? Only if we have an integer is it gonna let us move on. And so now we have something that, that seems like what I was looking for in the first place. Okay, so this, this basically is doing what I wanted to do. I have to admit, personally, this feels like a lot for a simple program just to read in an integer. And of course, there are other ways to do this, some of them uglier than others. But usually, if I'm in a situation where I'm reading input line by line, either from standard in or from a file, I'm usually actually gonna use something like getLine or fgets, and I'm gonna use it to read in the whole line, and then I've got a lot of options 
options for how I parse it. I could use STR toke or one of its many relatives. I got videos about those if you're interested. And if I like scanf, I can use scanf along with all of the format specifiers and all of that. But I no longer have to worry about what's still in standard ins buffer and what may or may not have been pulled off. I know I got the whole line and then I can just parse it as I like. And if I'm doing something really funky, I can write my own scanner if the built-in solutions aren't doing it for me. But at this point, whether you love or hate scanf, I hope this helps you have a better understanding of how it works, how you could use it in your programs, and some of the things that you need to keep in mind as you're using it in those programs. So thanks again for being here. Click something on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next week.